In this video, we'll discuss how to evaluate algebraic expressions. An algebraic expression is really any arithmetic combination of terms. So you've got variables being multiplied together, added, subtracted, exponents, fractions. So any of the arithmetic operations that we have involving variables is called an algebraic expression. In order to evaluate an algebraic expression, we're going to need to know the order of operations, which is parentheses and then exponents, then multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction. And we usually abbreviate this with the acronym of PEMDAS. P for parentheses, E for exponents, MD for multiply, divide, AS for addition and subtraction. And we want to make sure to use extra parentheses when necessary to preserve the proper order of operations. And we'll see a couple examples of why we need those extra parentheses. Let's start with this one. It asks us to evaluate 3x minus 4y plus 2z when x equals negative 2, y equals 1, and z equals 8. So let's start by replacing the x with the value that they give us for x, negative 2. So if I write 3 and then I write a negative 2, if I just write the 3 and the negative 2 next together, like the 3 and the x are written next to each other, if I just write them next to each other, it looks like subtraction. It looks like 3 subtract 2. But I know that 3x means 3 times x. So how do I make there be a multiplication there? Well, I can put a multiply sign, but that's usually awkward with the negative there. So instead, I'm just going to put the negative 2 in parentheses. And as, and as a general rule, whenever we're substituting values into an algebraic expression, we want to put that value in parentheses. We won't always need the parentheses, but we sometimes will. And so if we get into the habit of just always using the parentheses, then we're less likely to make a mistake. So the next term in our algebraic expression is minus 4y. So minus 4, and then they tell us that y should be 1, so we'll put in a 1 in parentheses. And then finally, plus 2z plus 2 times z is 8. Okay, so if we think about our order of operations, the first thing on the list is parentheses, and we see a bunch of parentheses. But what that p in PEMDAS really represents is operations inside parentheses. And all we have here are numbers inside parentheses. There's nothing to do inside those parentheses. So we skip that and move on to e for exponents. We don't have any exponents, so now we go on to multiply and divide. And these parentheses are telling us to multiply. 3 next to a negative 2 means to multiply 3 times negative 2. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then 4 times 1 is 4, and 2 times 8 is 16. So we've done all of our multiplying, and notice that we went from left to right. So when we say multiply and divide, we're going to do all the multiplying and dividing from left to right. We don't do all the multiplying and then all the dividing. We do all the multiplying and dividing, and we go in the order from left to right. Same thing with adding and subtracting. So we do all the adding and subtracting from left to right. So we have negative 6 minus 4, that gives us a running total of negative 10. And then negative 10 plus 16 gives us a positive 6, and that's our final answer. Okay, here's another one. So this time we only have one variable, x, and we're told to evaluate x squared minus 2x plus 1 when x equals negative 3. So again, whenever we substitute into an algebraic expression, we want to put that number in parentheses. So negative 3 squared minus 2 times negative 3 plus 1. We had x in two different places, but we put the same number in both places. They tell us that x should be negative 3, so both of our x's become negative 3's. So if we think about our order of operations, p is parentheses, but again, we don't have any operations inside parentheses. We just have parentheses that represent grouping and multiplication. So the next thing in our order of operations is exponents. We do have an exponent, negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared means minus 3 times minus 3, and minus 3 times minus 3 is a positive 9. Notice that it's really important that we put the parentheses here. If we had mistakenly forgotten the parentheses and just written minus 3 squared like that, the exponent takes priority. The exponent happens first, and then the minus sign gets applied. So minus 3 squared like that, without parentheses, is actually negative 9, because the exponent happens first. Think about it this way, there's a little bubble around the 3 squared because the exponent happens there first. So it's a good thing we remembered our parentheses because in this case we really do want the positive 9. All right now we have minus 2 times minus 3, that's positive 6, and plus 1. We've done all our multiplying, we don't have any dividing to do, 
adding and subtracting, 9 plus 6 plus 1 turns out to be 16. All right, this will be our last example. We're going to substitute in x equals 3 and y equals negative 2 into this fraction. So we've got 4 times 3 minus 6 divided by 5 minus 2 times minus 2. All right, so when we see a fraction here, we don't see parentheses, but we do see a division. So we're, we're, th we're thinking to ourselves, we want to do that dividing, but we can't really take the top and the bottom and divide them because the top is this complicated thing and the bottom is this complicated thing. So really what's happening here, if we wrote this without the big fraction bar, is that we've got this complicated top expression, 4 times 3 minus 6, divided by the complicated bottom expression, 5 minus 2 times minus 2. And if we were going to type this in our calculator, that's how we would want to do it. We would want to make sure that we put the bottom and the top both in parentheses to show that it's a complicated top of our fraction and a complicated bottom to our fraction. All right, so now the P in PEMDAS is important. We've got to figure out those two expressions on the top and the bottom of our fraction. We've got 4 times 3 minus 6, so that's 12 minus 6 when we do our multiplication. On the bottom, we've got 5 minus 2 times minus 2, so that's 5 plus 4. Still working inside the parentheses, on the top we have 6, and on the bottom we have 5 plus 4, which is 9. So we get an answer of 6 divided by 9. Now that's not simplified, though. We can reduce that fraction, 6 over 9, by taking the top and the bottom and dividing them both by 3. 6 divided by 3, that's 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and so the answer we're looking for here is 2 thirds.